Hello everyone, this is episode 25 of Brombird News. The results from the best birding spots in the U.S. are in, and the winner is the Aransas National Wildlife Refuge in Texas. Congratulations! On Backyard Feeding this week, I wanted to talk to you about bluebirds and bluebird houses, and I wanted to show you how I have it all set up in my yard, but the weather is just not cooperating. So here's something I shot in New Brunswick, and what do you do when you love cats as much as you love birds? Did you know that every year about 3 billion birds get killed by cats? And not just your feral cats, your regular domestic cats that people let outside if they want to, them to get some fresh air. I don't have a cat, but I often see my neighbor's cats roaming in my backyard and checking out my bird feeders. And that really, really disturbs me and worries me. So if you love birds, but you have cats, please keep your cats inside. Or there are a couple of things that you can also do. So here's something my uncle built and he calls this a catio. He has several cats, but he also has many species of birds that come to his backyard. And he was worried about cats playing with birds and just killing them for fun. So he built this thing where his cats come outside, they get some fresh air, they watch birds and everything else that happens in the backyard but they will not actually be able to jump and kill birds just for fun. So there, I got some treats for the cat. Hi there, a little treat. Come, come, come on. There. No, not interested. Um, if you don't have a house and you can't put an extension like this, there are actually many things you can do to uh, make this exterior extension to your apartment. Uh, there are some examples on the internet. Hi David, this week's question for you is from Alan Marion from North Carolina. They set up a nesting box for a barn owl. They were told that barn owls normally nest in February. So far they haven't seen anything or anyone in the box. They're wondering what to do with it. When putting up nesting boxes for any kind of bird, it's always a bit of a crapshoot whether the right tenants will take up residency in it. The fact that you regularly see barn owls in your neighborhood is a great start. That means that great horned owls, a major predator of barn owls, are not too prevalent. There are many options for locating a barn owl nesting box. Trees, posts in a field, or inside or outside on a building. Each has its pros and cons. Trees without predator guards in particular do allow unwanted guests to access the box, including squirrels. As for your immediate squirrel problem, you have several options. Next season, keep the hole plugged until the owls show up. And maybe you could install a cheap nest cam to determine this. Or you can install a second box fairly close to the existing one to allow squirrels and owls to coexist. If the second owl box is too expensive, buy a cheaper kestrel or screech owl box and enlarge the hole to about four inches for the squirrels. Or you can re relocate your owl box in an isolated tree from other trees or in a separate pole with a squirrel guard. Squirrels might not like the fact that they have limited escape options. Be careful though, a box located in direct sunlight can bake the baby owls. If you want faster results, keep in mind that squirrels always have alternative nesting locations. So if you remove the baby squirrels and place them in another cheap wooden near, uh, box nearby, the mother will carry them one by one to the other location. That leaves your original box open for your desired guests, the barn owls. Scientists have just discovered why some bird parents let their chicks starve and others don't. It's all pretty obvious. If there's plenty of food and it's easy to come by, then parents feed the whole brood. This ensures that all the hatchlings survive. In cases when the food is scarce, then parents pick the bigger, healthier looking chicks and completely ignore the calls of the weaker ones. It's sad, but this ensures that at least some of the brood will survive. If you want to provide more food for baby birds, then please make sure you plant native trees and plants on your property. You see, bugs that are fed to baby birds can only live on native flowers, plants and trees. I'll be talking more about it once gardening season starts. 
It seems like Syria is always in the news these days, whether it's photos of the destruction or heartwarming stories about families reaching safety. But one thing we don't really hear about is how this war is affecting wildlife there. On episode 8, I talked to you about the northern bald ibis, a migratory bird that nests in Turkey and then flies through Syria on its way to Africa. This bird has been on the endangered list for many years. To help protect the remaining birds, the Turkish Department of Parks and Wildlife has captured as many birds as possible to prevent them from migrating through the Syrian war zone. The captured birds are fed a special diet of fat-free meat, salt-free cheese and boiled eggs. They're also given clean materials to build their nests. When the fighting stops, of course, the birds will be released to continue with their migration. Birds and planes never seem to be a good mix, but every once in a while there is some good news. After a successful trial in Michigan, the Federal Aviation Authority has decided to change lights across the whole country on all the airport warning towers from solid red to flashing red. What they discovered in the process is that birds were not as hypnotized or as attracted to flashing red instead of solid, which now results in less bird collisions and deaths. This is a win-win for everyone, helping birds and protecting air traffic. There are certain things in my daily routine that I just can't live without, birds and music. So having a festival that combines both of those things sounds like a fun event to me. Check out the Birding and Blues Festival that will take place in Pacific City, Oregon from April 29th to May 1st. There, during the day, you can go on all sorts of field trips, participate in several workshops, and then at night, there are concerts. One thing that I keep forgetting to tell you about is that all these festivals are always looking for volunteers. What a great way to participate in the festival, meet new people and see the world, don't you think? Before I tell you who the winner is on this week's episode, I would like to make an announcement. For the next three episodes, we're teaming up with a wild bird trading company. They make their own line of hummingbird feeders and they have generously sent us three to give away on the show. So send us more pictures to photos at bronebirdgear.com. And now let's have a look at the top five this week. And so we are sending a Squirrel Solution 200. This feeder is actually very popular with finches. And it's going to William Benedetto in Louisiana, who seems to have a lot of finches. William has been really shy about his pictures, but I think he's doing a great job. Congratulations, William. Well, that's it for this week. Head over to our blog for a chance to win another feeder, brombirdnews.com.